uh, the principal walked her to the front of the line and said, please tell me you don't have any more. My mother was so proud to hear that um, because it meant that her kids didn't get in this, any serious trouble and they frustrated the heck out of the rule maker that would give any other reason except because I said so. Hi, it's Nani, and welcome to the Chronicles of Nani. Uh, keeping in mind that I record on Saturdays, so today is Saturday, the 5th of September, 2020, I can tell you almost, well, maybe not to the letter, but I can pretty much tell you what I was doing 17 years ago today. Yesterday, September 4th, was the 17 year anniversary of the death of my mother. Um, my mom was, uh, she never gave up her youth. And I think my, my closest friends uh, did everything that we could do to make sure that she stayed that way. Uh, we called her our den mom and she did a lot of the crazy things that we did with us. Um, the uh, my 37th birthday, which was July of that year, uh, we celebrated with a group of uh, our friends or a group group of my friends at a Michigan Whitecaps game. And mom and dad were our uh, parental guidance, our supervisors. Um, they they kept us in check. Um, actually, they had as much fun as we did. Um, but uh, it, when it came to the time that she died, and it was a surprise. Um, she had gone into the doctor. Uh, she was having some serious problem with sores on her legs from diabetes and uh, was expecting that when she went into the doctor that she would be told that she was going to lose one or both of her legs. Uh, and she was prepared for that. Um, what nobody was really prepared for was that she wasn't going to come home. That she was going to have a heart attack in the hospital. Uh, and that she wouldn't come home. She wasn't going to be getting used to prosthetics uh, for her legs. We were going to be getting used to living without her in all of our daily lives. Uh, my mother and I were very, very close. Uh, we were close as I was growing up. I actually was still close in, in a, I could tell my mother things uh, that were going on and it kept me out of trouble as a teenager. Uh, and we became best of friends as adults. And we still did lots of things together. I traveled uh, extensively with my mom all over the country. Um, so I was very close to her. And uh, last week when I was uh, talking about creative expression, there's a poem that I wrote seven months to the day after she died um, that ended up on the cutting room floor. Um, which in the digital world really isn't a real thing. Um, it just means it got cut out because it, it was a long enough blog to begin with. Um, so, but in the old days of film, it would be cut out and seriously on the cutting room floor. Um, I don't think that phrase has left in the uh, profession that I haven't actually been active in in a few years. But it was still there when I left. Um, but I would like to uh, share that with you this week. Uh, 
since it's right after the anniversary of her death, might even be a more appropriate place to put it. So I'd like to take a break now and uh, show you the piece from the cutting room floor from last week, a poem that I wrote for my mom called Always. So this poem is a poem that I wrote about my relationship with my mom. Um, and, and this was after she'd been gone a while, but I can tell you now that she's been gone since 2003 and there are still days that I dearly miss her. So here's the poem. The name of the poem is Always. It happened one warm July morning. There was chaos and peace. There was fear and anticipation. You and I began. I was your miracle. You were my everything. You taught and I learned. Then I taught and you learned. We both grew and that bond of love strengthened. I was your work in progress. You were my foundation. You held so many doors open. I sampled it all and I dared to fly. You stayed far enough away to give independence, yet close enough to catch me every time I fell. I was your adventurer. You were my safety net. You led me back onto the better path. You showed me ways to channel my anger. When few had that option, I could tell you the truth. I ran to you, not from you. I was your major project. You were my guidance counselor. I moved on, earning awards and degrees. I showed you first. You beamed but expected no less. You boasted to anyone who'd listen and challenged me to do more. I was your pride. You were my strength. The roles reversed, and I encouraged you to push a little more. You never took advantage, though you knew you could. The bond of respect and trust was unbreakable. The love was unconditional. I was always your precious child. You were my mother. I think the easiest thing for me about uh, showing the cutting room floor version of always is I'm not crying after I read it. Uh, because that will be done in editing. So I didn't even just hear it. I'll have just heard it a couple days from now when I finish it, editing. Um, so I'm not crying and I'm not all puffed up and everything like I was last week. Uh, my mother was a very supportive person. She supported everything I tried, everything that I wanted to do. Um, she was always willing to go to bat for me um, because she one of the favorite things she used to love to tell my brother and me as we were growing up is, I don't believe in Saint Child because I sure wasn't. Um, but she did teach us to always question authority if authority didn't make sense. If somebody told you this has to be this way because I said so, not a good reason. Uh, because I said so is simply you're puffing out your chest and you're saying, I have the authority, you will do what I tell you to. No. Uh, it, it's explain to me why. And if you can't explain to me why you're giving me an order, then we need to sit and talk. Because you've got to convince me to follow your orders or follow your rules or I, I'm not going to. Um, and it doesn't mean that I'm going to blatantly break them. But it does mean I'm going to walk on the line 
and I'm going to show you up because you're not going to be able to call me in for breaking one of your rules, but you're also going to be really frustrated uh, because I'm basically sticking my tongue out at you and saying, na, 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 you can't bust me, but boy, you can really get ticked off at me. Um, this was uh, the truth with my principal in high school. Um, there were a lot of times that my mother had to go in and talk to him uh, because I'm in trouble for something that, as far as my mother was concerned, I didn't do. Uh, and she actually would go to bat for me. And she would say, you said she can't do this. And she didn't. She walked right on the edge because you didn't give her any reason not to. Um, and it was to the point, and my mother was actually very proud that when my brother graduated and she was going in because he was graduating early in, in January because he had enough credits. Uh, he just needed to make sure he had government in, in the first semester. And uh, when she went in and to, to basically sign off on, yes, I want this done and it's okay. Uh, the principal walked her to the front of the line and said, please tell me you don't have any more. My mother was so proud to hear that um, because it meant that her kids didn't get in any serious trouble and they frustrated the heck out of the rule maker that would give any other reason except because I said so. Um, and she, she was just incredibly proud of the fact that the principal was ready to get any child with our last name out of his school. Um, cause he didn't want to deal with my mother, I think as much as anything else. Mom was real good about, uh, be strong and be knowledgeable. Don't ever do something just cause someone says to do it. Make them explain themselves. I, I didn't know, uh, when my mother was diagnosed with arterial sclerosis in 1995, that the doctor had actually told her she had about five years. Um, it wasn't until sometime in the beginning of 2003 that she actually shared that information with me. Uh, I don't even think she told my father uh, because she didn't want pity. She wanted to get the most out of that time that she had left. And she wanted to enjoy the last five years if she could extend them, which she did. Um, but she wanted to be able to enjoy what she had and not have anybody feel sorry for her. Um, now, multiple sclerosis is not a terminal disease. Um, it doesn't actually change my lifespan in, in the least. Um, and the considering that my grandmother was 84, that my great grandmother was almost 96 and my great great grandmother who I did know for a while um, was well into her 90s when she died. I figure I have a choice to make. I can sit and sulk and feel awful about it for let's see I'm 54 now another 40 years um, or I can find anything that's worth smiling about and feeling good about uh, for those next 40 years. And that's absolutely what I intend to do. And that's the end of this week's Chronicles of Nani. What my mother did for me and how well she raised me and that she gave me strength and courage and insistence on things that I need and want uh, and how much that helps me um, it exists in, in a wheelchair when I'm out of the house. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this week's installment. Um, and I definitely hope that, uh, you'll see me, uh, again next week, uh, 
8 o'clock Friday morning or any time after that. Uh, and I will see you next week and have a fantastic week.